out of the system now and just his and his teammates are going to support him. They're just going to be like, keep, you know, keep at it. The fans are going to keep at it and, and, and support him on it because you're trying to get him ready for the playoffs, you know, at this point. Um, but as far as like the first game, I think that was good. Second game, I, I still didn't want, you know, give him a hard time on that one. Again, he, he's just getting back into the mix and they won the game anyway. They won. It was the Knicks, 118 to 101, you know, so it wasn't as of a struggle uh, that you would think that that they would have, you know, uh, it was the Knicks. The, the Knicks are not a team that are that's competing, you know, so they should have beat them. You you uh, wanted him to have a better, you know, game, but it is what it is, you know, at, at, at this point. In, in how many games has Markel played through the season? Maybe 10 games, you know, and everybody else has played 70 at, at this point. He's just playing catch up. He's just playing catch up. Angry Batman says in the chat room, in the wait a minute show chat room, he says, false ass another playmaker for Philly. And, and, and Angry Black Man makes a good point because what I just pointed out, first game was eight assists. This last game uh, tonight was seven assists. That is getting people involved in the game. That is making plays, just like Angry Black Man was just saying, is that they are getting people, he is getting people involved in the game. So we've seen, uh, and, and he could be, he could be, a guy, and I'm going to give you a guy, an angry black man may know this and put it in the chat room before I say it, but I'm going to give you a guy, a point guard, who didn't score any points or barely scored any points, but still was a vocal part and a vital part to the team uh, because of assists and rebounds and playmaking, just like angry black man said. And that person was Rajon Rondo. Rajon Rondo, he don't like shooting. He'd be wide open. Shoot it. Shoot it, Rondo. No, I'm not shooting the ball. And he would rather throw an assist. We saw in that playoff game, uh, Chicago. Ah, who were they playing? I forgot who they were playing in the playoffs, but Rajon got hurt. And, oh, I think it was Boston. And, and everyone basically said if Rajon had played in that game uh, for the whole series, they would have beat the Boston Celtics. So he could be like that. That's in, in If they haven't showed him that, it's just like, look, Right now, we don't we don't even need you to be scoring 15, 20 points and everything. Keep dishing those assists. Keep getting those rebounds. Keep making plays. We're going to be all right. And then you're shooting, and all that other stuff will come to you eventually. So, like Angry Black Man was saying that he's going to, you know, add another playmaking uh, player and someone that a team is going to have to account for, you know, at, at this point. So, I, I, I like it. I hope the kid has some success because he's went through a lot and, and – it seems like, you know, with the physical, it's physical, but it also seemed like it was mental as well. And you don't want anything like that to happen to someone that's just getting into the league. You know, uh, Mo Cheese Country Road Show said Philly is going to be a problem for someone in the playoffs. Exactly. They are not going to just be an easy out. Uh, it, they could even get swept. And I still don't think it's going to be an easy out. Uh, Detroit, they played Cleveland uh, what, a couple years ago, I want to say. and it was not an easy out, even though they got swept by the Cavaliers. It still was not an easy out. You saw in what you thought you saw. You thought Detroit, was, you know, had some promise in the next year. They were going to be better and everything. It didn't work out like that. But they posed a problem for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So this could be the same thing, you know, for the Philadelphia 76ers. Again, trust the process. This is a process. No one, they are not going to the Eastern Conference final, uh, and they are not sniffing the, the NBA finals this year. This is a process where they're going to get better and they're going to get other guys, but Markel Fultz is going to get better as well. So I like what he did. Even tonight, it was not the greatest thing, but it is a process. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, shout out to Tiffany Poodle in Portland, Esquire. She's talking about uh, Go Blazers. Lillard is a papa now. So I guess Dame Lillard had a kid. Uh, so now he Papa Dame, you know, and just in, instead of just Dame, you know. Uh, Angry Black Man said, uh, Bulk's up 2 0, Bucks up 2 0 when Rondo got injured and they lost the next four games and series. Yeah. Yeah, they were up. Oh, Bulls. He said it was Bulks in the thing. But, yeah, Bulls was up 2-0 at 
Everyone was talking about Boston getting swept. I mean, because it wasn't close games. They It was convincing games. And it was obvious that Rondo had an effect. So, yeah, show them that tape. Show them those two games that Rondo played and, and said, you know what? Even if your jumper ain't on, man, we got you. If you just make plays, we going to be all right. We going to be all right. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, we going to be all right. So, I'm going to try and stay calm when I go into this next topic. Because there's a little homerism in it. But Final Four is going down. Saturday, you got my, my Michigan Wolverines against Loyola. And you got the number one uh, seeds, Villanova and Kansas going at each other as well. So we're going to talk about uh, those two matchups, which both of them should be really good matchups. Uh, and, and they shouldn't be boring games at all. And we'll talk about Michigan and Loyola first because they're the first uh, team or the first match on the docket, you know, for Saturday night. Uh, everyone knows I got Michigan, you know, winning this. Uh, I'm from Flint. I born and raised F line T for life. So yeah, I'm rolling with Michigan, you know, uh, on it to beat Loyola, but this is not going to be, um, an easy win or anything like that. Uh, I said when Michigan beat Texas A&M and they took on Florida state, I was like, I hope Michigan is not thinking they're going to be, uh, raining threes like they did, uh, against Texas A&M. And as we saw, they did not, those threes were not falling, but this Loyola team, uh, Loyola Chicago, I should say, uh, is, is a team that won 32 and five. They have 32 and five. I don't care what conference that you play in, you know, unless, unless you play in, you know, in, in a church league somewhere and, and everyone is 50 to 60 years old, 32 and five is impressive. Um, but the game that they have won, um, they are battle tested. Loyola of Chicago, Loyola Chicago is battle tested. And their past few games that they played, Kansas State. Now they handled Kansas State, 78 62. But Nevada, they won by one. Tennessee, uh, a highly ranked Tennessee. Everyone was shocked by that. Beat them by one. And the, the biggest thing that they uh, pulled off, I guess, to start this whole thing was they beat Miami. I'm sorry, Mocha Bella, Miami Mocha Bella Hurricanes by two points. So they are battle tested. They are not someone that's going to, um, shall we say, scare easy. The big lights is not big lights for them. Uh, they've already proved that that they can handle that. Now, what Michigan needs to do with Loyola uh, to win this game is that and Michigan has, has built their, their brand of, of basketball on defense. They are going to have to play one of their best defensive performances in this game. I, I'm not even really going to worry about the offense because uh, they will – shoot threes, they will, you know, try and mix it up as they should, take it to the basket, you know, and everything. But I, I want you to listen to this. Uh, yeah, I want you to listen to this. When when Loyola played Kansas State from the field, they shot 57% and they shot 50% from three-point line, from the three-point line. That was against Kansas State. Then when they played Nevada, excuse me, uh, they shot 56% from the field. Now, three-pointers weren't that great, but they were 38%, but they still were effective. And then against Tennessee, which was the, the real big shocker, they shot from the field 50%. So they've been shooting over 50%, you know, from the field. Michigan is going to have to do something about that. Uh, and, and they have done that in previous games in, uh, that they've played in this tournament, uh, and that being Michigan, you know. Uh, Florida State, Florida State that Michigan just beat. That was a close game, but their defense affected Florida State and Florida State shot 31 percent, 31 percent from the field. You're not going to win with 31 percent. Texas A&M, they shot them out the building and and Texas A&M basically took themselves out of the game. They shot 48 percent, but they had to, you know, they had to just put up because they were behind. By so much, they almost lost 
uh, uh, by 30 points, if you will. So they had to do that. So that was a little bit out of the norm. Michigan was on fire, you know, at that at that point. Uh, and then they played Houston, which was a close game. So they've been battle tested as well, 64-63 in that Houston game. And in Houston shot 37%. So what Michigan needs to do, they're going to have to keep Loyola uh, under 50% shooting from the field. They are, they got a lot of confident guys, you know, on their team. And again, like I said, they are not scared of the moment, you know, at this point. It's going to be a good game, but of course I'm going to go with Michigan on this. And I picked Michigan to beat Florida State by four, and that's how it played out, if I remember right. Uh, they won by four points. Yeah, it was 58-54. Uh, so I'm going to go... Six points, six point win for Michigan against Loyola. Um, and Loyola would probably score. Mm, I'm going to say they'd probably score around 60 points. You know, uh, everything they've scored over 60 points, you know, all of their games. So if Michigan can keep them 60 points or lower, I think they will pull out uh, this win and, and Michigan will be good to go. Uh, Mel Cabela, my Mel Cabela in the Wait a Minute Show chat room said Loyola's going to beat Michigan. Sorry, Jelani. <laughs> Book it. I got Sister Jean on my side. Well, you know what, Mel Cabela? You may have Sister Jean on your side, but I got Grand Mammy Poo on our side. Yeah, she, ain't, she don't go to Michigan. She ain't related to anything like that. But we got old people on our side too, uh, Mel Cabela. So, Sister Jean, I'm just telling you, the ride is over. It This is where you get off, and it is done. But that's going to be for another story that we're going to be talking about later uh, after the game is played, and we'll find out who's right. But Mocha Bella has booked it. Loyola beating Michigan. So, hey, we'll... we'll We'll, we'll revisit this, Mocha Bella, and we'll see uh, who was right and who was wrong. But also, not to be outdone by Loyola and Michigan, we're going to have probably the game that everyone is really going to keep their eye on, the two number ones, with uh, Kansas versus Villanova. And this is, uh, again, this is going to be another good game. Uh, as Lopen did my bracket, because Lopen did my bracket, not me, right, Lopen? You did my bracket, Lopen, right? <laughs> Okay, Lopin got Villanova in the championship game, so obviously, and Lopin got Kansas in the final four, so he did pick these two matchups. Uh, he did well uh, with that. Lopin, I just said you did well with that. You don't have to agree with me. I mean, I patted you on the back. You don't have to pat yourself with on the back as well. You know, but he did pick these two to meet up to go to the championship game. Uh, so this is how it has come about. And, and I'm not surprised by that uh, this matchup because Villanova, here's the thing with Villanova that, that Kansas has to worry about is that, and, and I think this will be a, a high scoring game. I think this will game will probably get uh, in the 80s to 90s uh, for both teams. They're going to be going back and forth. So I, I expect it to be a, a very high power offense uh, game. And, what was the last few games that, that Nova played? And, and Nova hasn't had really any competition with anyone. Uh, they, I think they blew out everybody by, by double digit points, every game that they played, you know, in this, um, in this tournament and lowest they ever scored was 71 points. That's very good. That's very good. Especially for a team that won the championship two years ago. So, uh, you got, Guys that were on that championship team that has the experience, because we always talk about uh, experience in the tournament or experience being in um, uh, 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 seniors, juniors, you know, and, and, and this this is how this tournament is made up. And this is and this is why some of the smaller schools uh, do do well, because they play together better. But Villanova, high power offense, but. Kansas also themselves is, is no chap. Uh, they've had a lot fewer uh, blowout games, but they've been scoring in the 80s, and I think their lowest game was 76 as well. So that's why I got this game probably going around in, in the 90s. But the biggest thing for me uh, that, that Kansas to win this game, 
uh, is that they're going to have to do and they're going to have to make sure this guy stays out of foul trouble.